So guys, welcome back to our channel Akash Ganka. So today we are diving into the interesting world of geopolitics and military strategy as we explore the island chain strategy. Originating in 1951 during the Korean War, this maritime containment plan conceptualized by American statesman John Foster Dulles aimed to encircle the Soviet Union and China. The island chain strategy was conceived by John Foster Dulles in 1951 during the Korean War. The primary objective was to surround the Soviet Union and China with naval bases in the West Pacific for power projection and to restrict sea access. The island chain concept did not play a prominent role in American foreign policy during the Cold War. But after the dissolution of Soviet Union, the island chain strategy became a major focus for both American and Chinese geopolitical and military analysts. In the present day, the island chain strategy continues to be a significant aspect of American foreign policy. It remains a focal point for Chinese geopolitical and military considerations. As per US, the island chain strategy is crucial for the force projection of US military in the Far East. But for China, the island chain strategy is integral to its maritime security. China is concerned about potential strategic encirclement by US armed forces. The island chain strategy underscores the geographical and strategic importance of Taiwan for both the United States and China. As we dive into a complex geopolitical puzzle, the delicate dance between the United States, China and Taiwan. Let's unpack why these nations find themselves at longer herds over the island of Taiwan. Taiwan, a nation that sees itself as a sovereign, but is claimed by China as its breakaway province. Adding to the complexity, Taiwan also counts the United States as its biggest ally, backed by a law that mandates US assistance in its defense. But why is this small island in the East Asia Sea causing such tension? Officially known as Republic of China, Taiwan holds a strategic position sandwiched between Japan and the Philippines at the crossroads of the East and South Chinese Sea. Beyond its geopolitical importance, Taiwan is a leader in the global semiconductor supply chain. With its contract manufacturers contributing over 60% of the total global semiconductor revenue. Despite its economic prowess, only 13 countries officially recognize Taiwan as a sovereign nation. This lack of international recognition sets the stage for a complex diplomatic landscape. Its proximity to mainland China and the historical claim by Beijing add layers of complexity to the situation. Some observers link the tension between China and Taiwan to global events such as Russia's invasion of Ukraine, suggesting it should act as a possible catalyst for a conflict in the East China Sea. From a US perspective, Taiwan plays a crucial role. It anchors a chain of islands, strategically positioned and friendly to the US, serving as leverage against China's expansion plans. Although the US lacks official diplomatic ties, the Taiwan Relations Act of 1979 obligates the US to provide defense capabilities. The United States follows a strategic ambiguity policy, neither explicitly recognizing nor denying Taiwan's independence. This policy, coupled with being Taiwan's largest arms dealer, shapes the intricate dance of diplomacy in the region. First Island Chain a strategic geopolitical boundary that played a pivotal role during the Cold War and continues to shape regional dynamics today. The first island chain, a term etched in the annals of Cold War history, serves as a maritime fortress. Beginning at the Kuril Islands and weaving through the Japanese archipelago, the Rinkayu Islands, Taiwan and extending southward to Borino. This strategic belt was conceptualized during the Cold War, 
emerging as the first line of defense against the expansion of Soviet influence in the East and the Southeast Asia. It was a calculated effort to contain the spread of the Soviet Union and its socialist allies. At the heart of the first island chain lies Taiwan, a midpoint and a key element in the strategic barrier. The term unsinkable aircraft carrier was coined, highlighting Taiwan's crucial role in the defense architecture. Beyond its function as a defense line, the first island chain serves as a crucial maritime boundary, demarcating the East China Sea from the Philippine Sea and the South China Sea from the Sulu Sea. As nations race for influence, the first island chain remains a strategic chess piece, with Taiwan holding a central position. Its role goes beyond military significance, influencing trade, diplomacy, and the delicate balance of power in East Asia. The second island chain is formed by Japanese Bonin Island and Volcano Islands, along with Marina Islands, with a special mention of Guam, an important U.S. military base, and the Western Caroline Islands, including Yap and Palau and extending to western New Geneva. This island chain essentially acts as the eastern maritime boundary of the Philippine Sea. The significance of the second island chain lies in its role as a strategic defense line for the United States. Situated in the middle portion of the West Pacific, it serves as a buffer and a second line of indicating the geopolitical importance of the islands in the region. This concept is often discussed in the context of military strategy and international relations. As the control and influence over these island chains can have implications for regional stability and security, the presence of military bases, especially the heavily fortified one in Guam, underscores the strategic importance of the second island chain in the broader geopolitical landscape of the Asia-Pacific region. The third island chain, the grand finale in the strategic playbook. It kicks off at the Altian Islands, making a stylish southward journey, cutting through the heart of the Pacific Ocean like a maritime catwalk. Along the way, it hits up the iconic spots like the Hawaiian Islands, swings by the American Samoa, dances through the allure of Fiji, and finally, it takes a bow at the Southern Star New Zealand. But wait, here is the plot twist. Australia steps in as the unsung hero, holding it down as a staple that connects the second and third chains. It's like the anchor in this island hopping adventure, adding that extra layer of the cohesion to the whole strategic narrative. Now that's what I call a geopolitics with a touch of flair. Unlike the first three chains located in the Pacific Ocean, these new chains extend into the Indian Ocean, reflecting China's increasing interest in the region. The proposed fourth chain would include locations like Lakshadweep, the Maldives, and the Diageo Gracia, aiming to disrupt the string of Pearl's waypoint towards the Persian Gulf, including Gaudar Port and Hambadota. On the other hand, the proposed fifth chain would start from the Cam Lemenor in the Gulf of Aden, run around the Horn of Africa, and follow the entire East African coastline through the Mazabia Channel, encircling the Chinese naval base at the Darala. The intention is to potentially sabotage China's trade with Africa. Originally aimed at the Soviet Union, the strategy's primary target expanded to encompass not only the People's Republic of China, but also Vietnam, Russia, and the North Korea. Following the Soviet Union's dissolution in 1991 and China's economic ascent in the early 21st century, the focal point of the doctrine shifted decisively towards China as the central target. So guys, that is it for now. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that you never miss out on future content. Once again, thank you for joining. Bye.